During the London Chess Classic tournament, I went through a game between Hikaru Nakamura and Maxime Vashilagrav. <clears throat> and the, in the middle of that, their game transposed to an old game of Mikhail Tal's, uh, which I mentioned was rather beautiful, uh, but I didn't go any further. And many of you requested that I went through that game. So here we are now. It's a game between Anatoly Ufintsev playing white, Mikhail Tal playing black, played in 1967 in a team tournament in the Soviet Union. And the game started out as a Benoni. <clears throat> the Nakamura Vashila Grav game started out as a King's Indian, and then there were various weird things going on, but finally it transposed to this. But this is a pure Benoni. And Ufimtsev plays one of the main lines. I should say that um, Tal played the Benoni very often uh, early on in his career. Uh, but later on, when antidotes to the opening became more well known, then he uh, it was only uh, yeah a very you only saw it very rarely. But at this time, <clears throat> it was still not so known how to the, the best ways to tackle the opening. So this is one of the the main line positions, and here Black can play with a6, and then after a4, knight d7. And sometimes you know bring the knight into e5, maybe even sometimes g5. Um, but this doesn't have such a good reputation. Tal played with knight a6. That knight is going to come back to c7 to try to support b5. And this has a better reputation. So these are all <clears throat> the kind of main moves. Black looking to play b5, so white plays a4. And rook b8, so... A, uh, b5 is still the plan for black. And now the main move here is f3 to secure this pawn chain. Secure e4. And having protected the e4 pawn, then that means the knight can come to c4. Then black generally plays b6 and bishop a6. And this is, well, you could say one of the main lines. <clears throat> black often intends exchanging on c4 and then playing a6 in order to try to force through b5. But, well, theory assesses this position as slightly better for white, whatever that means, but a perfectly acceptable position for black. But instead of f3, Ufimtsev <clears throat> played f4, um, which looks terribly aggressive and great fun, but actually not a very good move. Um, of course, white wants to try to break with e5 at some moment, but not so easy to achieve that. And the f4 move, well, weakens this diagonal, weakens the g4 square, and most importantly, means that it's not so easy for white to move the knight from d2 because e4 is on pre's. So, probably not a good move. a6 from black. If black gets in b5, this is, of course, very pleasant. Then you push the knight on c3 out of the way. So a5. problem with a5 is that now black can use the b5 square. Bishop f3, protecting the e-pawn again. In order to play knight c4. Knight b5. <clears throat> by the way, we've transposed to the nakamura vashir Grav game by now. And with this knight perhaps coming into d4, um, black has tremendous play here. So uh, in our game, white sacrificed pawn with e5, as did Nakamura. So black took this, <clears throat> knight c4. Okay, it's a nice knight, and, and there's a passed d pawn, but black's pieces are so active, this doesn't really matter. And here, Nakamura played knight e2, and Vashti Lagrav sacrificed the exchange. If rook takes here, bishop g4 is very strong. Um, and after this, <clears throat> well, it's clear that Vashti Lagrav had, well, I was going to say excellent compensation with the exchange. In fact, material is now level. I mean, this is just a very, very good position for black. Two pawns and a bishop for a rook. And 
excellent minor pieces. But Nakamura held on to make a draw. Um, instead, in this game of tiles, Ufimtsev played knight e3, attacking the rook. So, well, if the rook goes to the side, then they're repeating the position. So, instead, Tal went forward. It looks very, very odd to have this rook kind of running around in front of its own pieces. But, well, black can get away with it. Knight e2. Now, here, a very clever idea. Tal played rook h4. So, just looking at that pawn on h2, and sometimes... You know, black might be able to get an attack, a very nice attack on h2. So Ufimtsev pushed the rook away, but only now, having provoked this weakness, does Tal come back to e4. Now, if white lets this go, then black is just a pawn up. Um, you know, white's pieces look really bad. So White decided just to take the exchange, but you can see, having given up that light squared bishop, then these squares around White's king are absolutely terrible, and that light squared bishop of tiles would love to be able to invade on those squares. So, Tal has tremendous compensation. He has a pawn and a bishop for the rook, and absolutely superb minor pieces. Um, incredibly, this position was reached in a game in 1989. Um, Smirin, uh, the Israeli player, playing with the black pieces, and he also won very quickly. Smirin's opponent played knight c4 here. Tal's opponent played knight f4. And now knight e4, look at those pieces in the middle of the board. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I mean, it's so depressing for white to play this, you know. Really poor development. <clears throat> King weak. Let's see. King g2. Queen e7 from Tal. Okay, these moves. He's doing nothing special at the moment. Just bringing all his forces into play. Rook e1 and now h5. So <clears throat> perhaps he's looking to uh, advance with h4 at some moment to sort of further open white's king, perhaps, well, just covering this square as well. Rook a3 from white. So trying to protect this knight and squares along the third rank. Rook e8. So Tal just bringing his pieces into play. Now white should play knight c4 here, but, well, black has tremendous compensation. Instead, white played a terrible blunder. Knight e2. And here, there's a winning move for black, bishop h3. And after the king takes, well, if the king comes back, then there are some horrible knight checks that decide the game. Well, white took, and knight g5 check came, and that was the end of the game. Um, obviously, if the king comes up the board, then there's a checkmate. And if the king comes back, check on e4. Check on h3, and queen f3 is mate. Short and sweet from Mikhail Tal, very nice. Unfortunately, uh, the Benoni doesn't always <clears throat> work that well. Um, if I find time, I'll try to um, look at some more games from Tal, and I'll create a, a playlist uh, with some of his best games. Um, but, well, it's all, all a case of finding the time to do it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, um, and yeah, as I said, look out for more tile games in the future.